then, uh, of course, Wednesday night we meet for prayer. And uh, I, I want to encourage you to pray with us. Come and pray with us. We believe God answers prayer. Some uh, years ago, I had a pamphlet that I, I used. You probably can't see it from there, but the title is, Do Good People Go to Heaven? And you know, that's a question a lot of people uh, hope that the answer is yes. Because uh, most people that I ask think that they're pretty good. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why we, we think that, but uh, generally most of us think, yeah, if people really knew me, they'd probably like me. Uh, so the, the question goes out this morning, do good people go to heaven? And we're, we're looking in Romans chapter 3 and 4, uh, particularly at the life of Abraham. In Romans chapters 1 through 3, he gets really down to the nitty-gritty. He really deals with uh, things as they are and shows us, God shows us that uh, we're sinful and God is righteous. In uh, Romans 3.10, for instance, this is just, just by way of introduction, uh, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous. In case you didn't understand that, he repeats it. No, not one. <laughs> You're not the exception. And neither am I. Uh, Romans uh, uh, 3, uh, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law doesn't commend us. The law condemns us. You ever had a policeman stop you and say what a good job you're doing? <laughs> I haven't. Uh, Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he goes into great detail showing us Jew, Gentile, the whole world is lost in sin. But you know, our hope is that the fact that God is righteous. Uh, Romans 3, verse 24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I love that word freely. Aren't you glad that salvation is free? There's no way we could pay for it. Only Christ could pay. Uh, Romans 3, verse 27, where is boasting then? Now, let me say this. I might repeat myself here a couple times today, but religion is based on boasting. Religion is based on the idea that I can be good and I can earn my way to heaven. Christianity is based on humility. Christianity is based on the fact that, I, that God says there's none good. I can't be good enough to go to heaven. Yet Christ loved me and gave himself for me. And what a difference. Where is boasting then, he says? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. See, we come to God by faith. We're really, the subject this morning is justification, being justified. Last night I was thinking, oh, this, this is such a, a simple, basic message. But you know, as, as I went over it this morning, I was encouraged, because it encouraged me to remember that I'm, I'm justified. The word means declared righteous. I don't have to stand before God in my own righteousness. I come before God in the merits of Jesus. And if God were to ask me, you know, why should I let you into my heaven? My answer would be, I come in the merits of Jesus. And the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, I mean, it's just, it's speaking clearly. We need to be hid in Christ in order to be able to go to heaven. We cannot make it on our own. And that's what, what we're talking about this morning, being justified. You might have noticed in 324, he said, being justified freely by his grace. We're, we're declared righteous. And when we talk about being justified, this is in God's sight. You can justify yourself, but does it persuade God? <laughs> you know, we're, we're talking about being justified in God's sight. It's by his grace. In Romans 5, verse 1, therefore being justified by faith. It's by faith in the grace of God that we're declared righteous. Uh, someone has given the definition, uh, justification is the act of God where the guilty sinner is declared righteous by faith in Christ. That's being justified. We're declared righteous by faith in Christ. God requires righteousness, and He is the only source. And in, He brings us into chapter 4, and He illustrates this very clearly with the life of Abraham. Well, we all know who Abraham was, you know, the man in the, in the Old Testament there, uh, the beginning of, of Israel. Let me read Romans chapter 4. I hope you have your Bible there. And uh, starting with verse 1, we'll read down to verse 5. Romans 4, verse 1. 
What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. For to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, Abraham, was he justified by good works? The Bible says no. Now, Abraham did a lot of good things, but the thing that sets him apart is that he was a man of faith. In fact, in verse 2 it says, if, if Abraham was justified by works, he would get the glory and not God. That's what it's saying there. If, if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. But that wasn't his attitude. Look at verse 20. It says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. See, he believed God. He didn't believe in himself. He believed in God. Ephesians chapter 2, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So God says, where is boasting then? Well, it's not in ourself. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, the question he puts in verse 3, what saith the scripture? And he quotes from Genesis chapter 15 when he says, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You probably know the original story. It's, it happened... Uh, about 2,000 years before Christ, and it's recorded in Genesis chapter 12 and, and following. And in Genesis chapter 12, God makes a promise to Abraham. Now, I've heard people say, God promised this to me, but it's not in the Bible. Now, th this is different. This is not just something you think. This wasn't just something Abraham thought God promised. God promised it to him. And when God writes it down, we can count on it. Genesis chapter 12, he said, uh, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. And he said in verse 2, I'll make of thee a great nation. God promised to bless Abraham. Well, a time went by. Genesis chapter 15. Um, Abraham said in verse 2, Lord, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless? <laughs> he said, You said I'm going to be a great nation, but last time I checked, you have to have a child <laughs> to do that. And God renewed the covenant with him. And it's, it's at this point that God says, look at the stars. He said, if you can count the stars, he said, you'd be able to count the heritage I'm going to give you. And the Bible says in verse 6, he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. This is what it's talking about there in Romans. God gave him a promise and Abraham believed. Even though there was nothing he could see that would say that that promise would come true. There was no child. Now, it gets worse. <laughs> Genesis chapter 17, over 20 years later. Now, people in those days seem to have married a bit older. Uh, was it Isaac? I think they got married when he was 70. I mean, wow. Uh, I would hate to think in five years I'm going to have my honeymoon. <laughs> uh, I might have to just, you know, send, I don't know, I better get off that subject. <laughs> Gen Genesis 17. Uh, Abraham was 90 years old and nine. Here he is, 99 years old, and they still haven't had a child. And God renews his covenant with him, and it, he's still believing. And in Genesis chapter 21, over 20 years after God had, had promised, the Bible says, The Lord visited Sarah, verse 1, as he'd said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he'd spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his own age, is his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Notice those words, the set time. God knew when it would take place. When God promised him, now he didn't tell him, when you're 99, you'll, you'll have a son. But he, but he knew. And when God makes you a promise in Scripture, he knows how it's going to be fulfilled. And uh, when we come to God, we have to come to him by faith. You know, really one of the miracles of uh, Abraham and Sarah having a child Part of it was their old age. We'll look at that in a moment. But the other was that Abraham could live with a pregnant woman that was over 70 years old. <laughs> <Now> that's a miracle. <laughs> uh, 
Abraham was justified by faith. That's what he's quoting there in Romans chapter 4. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, there's just some real basic truths that we need to, to see and understand. One is being right with God is not by works, it's by faith. You know, oftentimes when I, I hear people say, I want to get right with God, quite often they're, they're talking about what they're going to do. And, and it's good to do right. We, we do need to do that. But it starts by faith. We're justified by faith, not by works. And we need to understand that you, you need to get works in the right place in your life. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace and faith come first. And then he says we're saved unto good works. Works come after salvation. Don't, don't think you can work your way to God. Abraham couldn't. There was, there was nothing he could do to, to make that promise come true. Uh, he just had to trust the Lord. The second thing is, God doesn't owe you anything. Salvation is a gift, not a debt. Yeah, that's one of the things he, he says here in, in verse uh, 4 and 5. To him that worketh is the, re the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. If we could earn our salvation, God would owe it to us. But he doesn't. Listen, God doesn't owe you anything. God doesn't owe me anything. Uh, we can resent him all we want for the things he doesn't give us, but listen, he doesn't owe you anything. <laughs> and we need to be thankful for what he does for us. And like Abraham, we need to believe God in order to be right with God. At the end of verse 5, it says, His faith is counted for righteousness. In chapter 3, verse 28, he said, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This morning, as, as we look at justification, uh, we need to understand that, that it comes from God. And if we're going to be right with God, it has to be from God's point of view. When we believe God, the Bible says that He gives us righteousness. Now, He uses three words for that here. Let me read, starting in verse 6, uh, Romans 4, verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And he uses one word there, impute. Earlier in verse 3, he used the word count. God counted it unto him for righteousness. Uh, in verse 4, he used the word reckon. All three of those words have to do with God putting his righteousness on our account. It's as if you went to the bank and somebody had put a million dollars in your account. <laughs> Uh, they would impute it. It wasn't yours. They put it there. Well, righteousness comes from God. That's what justification is. Uh, was Abraham justified by good works? No. He was justified by faith. Uh, verse 20, uh, again, he says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You know, sometimes as you look around in the world, you think, oh, where is God? Well, listen, God is able to do what he said he's going to do. And we just need to, to believe him. Uh, do good people go to heaven? Well, it's impossible to be good enough to go to heaven. We have to believe that what God has promised, he's able to perform. Now, there's another subject that comes up. This is kind of an odd subject to talk about in public, but uh, this was an important question for the Jews. Was Abraham justified by circumcision? Uh, this comes up every once in a while in, in uh, public conversation. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 9. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm presenting this is this is the, what God presents. You'll see why in a moment. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Now, if you know anything about circumcision, it was one of the things that God told the Jewish people to do as a sign of their relationship uh, to the Lord, their walk with, with God. And what the Bible is saying here, and this was particularly important to the Jews, that Abraham was justified before circumcision. He wasn't justified by circumcision or after uh, Genesis 15, 6, where he quotes, uh, Abraham believed God. That was before Abraham was, was circumcised. And that's what he's, he's pointing out here. He was declared righteous by faith. Now look at verse 13. 
For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Abraham is a father of faith. He believed God. Uh, Abraham was not justified by being circumcised. Now, he, he points this out in several ways here. One is Abraham was justified before the law. The law came through Moses. That was later. Then he mentions in verse 6 David. David was justified during the law. Man, he was right in the middle of it. You know, the law was in effect when, when David was there in, in verse 6. Uh, he was justified by faith. Abraham was justified by faith. And then we'll see more later in verse 24. He says, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. We're after the law, and we're justified by faith. It's the same. Before, during, after, it's always by faith. Us also. Now, this is a good illustration for us in the area of baptism. Now, there's churches that teach that you're saved by being baptized. Just like the Jews would say, you're only right with God if you're circumcised. Did Abraham need to be circumcised? Yes, he did. God told him to. Did it make him righteous? No. <laughs> Faith had already done that. That's what Romans 4 verse 16 is, is talking about. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. Notice verse 11. This is kind of a complicated verse, but listen to it carefully. It's talking about Abraham. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. See, circumcision was after his faith, and it was a sign or a seal uh, that he had trusted the Lord, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also, talking about us uh, later. Now, do Christians need to be scripturally baptized? Yes, they do, uh, to be obedient to the Lord. Does it make us righteous? Does it make us a Christian? No, it doesn't. That's done by faith. Good illustration, isn't it? And we can, we can see that we're justified uh, by grace, not by the law. Uh, there's a great verse in Acts 13, uh, verse 39, where he says, By him, that's by Jesus, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Listen, keeping the law will not make you right with God. Theoretically, if if you could keep all of the law, which would be impossible, you still would not be right with God without faith. Faith has to come first. Uh, was Abraham justified by circumcision? No. Was Abraham justified by his strength? Now, we get into that as we talk about Abraham and Sarah getting old. I'm, I'm experiencing that. There's just things that are, are different when you're older. I, I can't imagine being 99. <laughs> um, Sarah was in her, her 70s, and in verse 17 of, of Romans chapter 4 there, it says, As it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations, for before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And he being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. See, there, there's their situation physically. They, it was impossible physically for them to have children. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he'd promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. You see... In this chapter, he first contrasts faith and works. We have to come to God by faith, not by works. And then he contrasts law and grace. You have to come to God by grace, not, not through the law. Well, now in this third section, he can contrast life and death. Only God can give life. Only God can bring life out of death. Abraham and Sarah could not have a child. <laughs> I mean, it's just that simple. 
his own body now dead, Sarah's, uh, the deadness of, of Sarah's womb. Uh, did they have to work it out? <laughs> no. Uh, there was nothing they could do. They had to believe God. And, and as time went by, you know, they, they kept going back to God. Now, God, you promised, you know, where are we going with this? And finally, God said, look at the stars. He said, that, that's the, the way I'm going to bless you. And that kind of, kind of bounty. And, you know, we need to understand only God can quicken the dead. And that's what he's illustrating here. You know, he waited. You know, he could have given them a child when they were 70, 60, 50, whatever. But he waited till it was physically impossible so they could see this is of God. This is of God. You know, the problem is many times we think that we can make our relationship right with God ourselves. We need to see it's impossible ourselves. Only God can work out our salvation. And we've got to come to him by faith. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about unsaved people, non-Christians are dead in trespasses and sins. Well, how can a dead person respond to God? Only God can do that. Only God can bring life from death. Uh, that's, that's why when, uh, when God begins to speak to your heart, man, it's uncomfortable. It, it's, it's hard getting raised from the dead. <laughs> yeah, you imagine some of these people Jesus raised from the dead when he was here. You know, here they are laying in the grave and, and boom, they've got to get up. The one guy, they used to bind him, you know. They said, loose him and let him go. I don't know how God raised him up. He, maybe he hopped out. I don't know. But it's uncomfortable being raised from the dead. And for a person to get saved, man, it, it's a real change. Death to life. And that's what he's talking about. This is a great illustration of salvation. You know, we sing the song, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You know, our hope is not in ourselves. It's not in this church. It's not in our health. It's not in our family. You, know, you could name everything, couldn't you? It's got to be in Christ. That's where our hope is. And what we're saying here is justification, salvation is by resurrection power, not by human effort. Now, there's encouragement there. <laughs> there's encouragement because even though we don't have the power to save ourselves, the power is available through God. Anyone can be saved if they'll come to the Lord. Listen, it's not just for good people. It's not just for great people or, you know, people with power. It's for everybody. We're all the same. Someone has said that the ground at the foot of the cross is, is level. It's the same for everybody. We all have to come to God by faith. Abraham had a simple faith in God's word. I love those verses. He verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God, being fully persuaded. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Just a simple faith. It works the same today. That's what he says in verse 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone. You know, God didn't just do this for Abraham. Not for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Same today as it was for Abraham. Same as it was for David. Same as it was for the Apostle Paul. We come to God by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Now, the basis of our justification, be, that, that just means being right with God, is the gospel. Justification is a matter of resurrection power. If, as you look at the Christian life, you, it's right to think, oh man, I can't do that. But God can do it through, in you. God can do it through you. Justification is a matter of resurrection power. Let me give you kind of a silly illustration. Say if you decided you wanted to be some famous person's son, child. Think of all the things you could do to pretend that you were their child. You could change your name. You could act like them. Um, you, you know, there, there's just all kinds of silly, foolish things you could do. There's probably people who do that. But you know what? There's nothing you can do to make yourself their child unless you were born their child or they adopt you. And that's the way it is with salvation. You can do all kinds of things. And boy, there's religions that do anything you can imagine <laughs> to try and impress the God that they believe in. But God says there's nothing you can do. God has to do it. And the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. 
God has to do it. How does a person get saved? Delivered from sin, right with God. In Romans chapter 4, he gives us, I think, at least four basic things here. One is by faith, not by works. Believing what God has said and done. That's why the Bible is so important. Listen, it's not an experience. It's by faith. Number two, it's a gift, not a reward. You can't earn it. It has to be received. Thirdly, it's by grace, not by law. And what that means is it's a gift. He pays for it. And fourthly, as we saw, it's by resurrection power, not by human effort. And that's the main difference between religion and Christianity. Listen, you don't need to get religion. You do need to get saved. Now, we can't save ourselves. Only God can do the impossible and bring life from death. Yeah, I think that's what's so insidious about the teaching of evolution. Evolution, somehow everything came from nothing. Life came from death without God. Listen, that's not the way it works. And science proves that, but they live in a, in a dream world. And you know, we need to understand, real life came from God, physical life. And spiritual life, eternal life, comes from God too. Only God can do the impossible and bring life from death. In Romans 6.23, he says the wages of sin is death. Wages are what you earn, what you deserve. What we deserve is death. You know, if you get what's fair, if you get what's right, you go to hell. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's gift, paid for by him in the life and death of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 10, he says that if thou shalt... Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then he says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a blessing that God offers salvation as a gift by his power. In Romans chapter 4 and verse 20, where, where we were looking this morning, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Let me encourage you this morning. Don't be, don't give in to unbelief. Don't be, don't be thrown, staggered. Just believe the Lord. Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You know, we started with the thought, do good people go to heaven? Well, I guess if there was any good people, they would, but God says there's none good. It's not by righteousness. And I would encourage you, uh, be like Abraham. Believe God and give glory to God. Uh, you know, if you're not saved, uh, like he says here, he says it very plainly, uh, we're, we just can't be good enough to go to heaven. We need to admit we're sinners and believe that Christ died for our sins and rose again and, and call upon him to save us. Just believe him and uh, give, give him the glory. But you know, probably many of you here this morning are Christians. You know, as Christians... We need to believe that God has declared us righteous. You know, even as Christians, many times we're thinking, oh, you know, God doesn't like me. God doesn't, you know, unhappy with me. Listen, God loves you. And God, in, in God's eyes, if you're saved, he has declared you righteous. That doesn't mean you don't have to worry about doing the right thing. But it just means your standing before God is secured. That's justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The end of, verse, of chapter 4, he says about Jesus, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. He died for our sins. He rose to give us life and righteousness. But let me encourage you this morning. There's only one place to get righteousness. It's from the Lord. If you go into any other source, you won't find it. Now, they might label it righteousness, but it won't be the real thing. You need the real thing. You need God's righteousness, and it's only found in Christ. And we're going to sing a, a song, uh, Trust and Obey. That's so basic, isn't it? We need to trust the Lord and, and then obey Him. It's page 337. Maybe you need to respond to the Lord this morning. Maybe you're not saved and, and need someone to, uh, to pray with you and show you from God's Word how to, how to know for sure by faith. Or maybe you're a Christian and need to follow the Lord uh, in uh, obedience. Uh, whatever your need might be. Let's stand together.